Area of a surface of revolution. A surface of revolution is formed when a curve is rotated about a line. We're going to focus on rotating a curve about the x-axis. So if we rotate about the x-axis, if we have a positive function that has a, con a continuous derivative, we define the surface area of that surface obtained by rotating the curve f of x from the interval a to b about the x-axis as the integral from a to b of 2 pi y times the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. And you should hopefully recognize this part that I just highlighted as the surface area. And so notice how, I'm sorry, as the, uh, the arc length. And so notice how the arc length is uh, involved in finding the surface area. All right, so when we just take that, we multiply it by the function itself and times two pi and evaluate the integral. If instead x is a function of y, we just adjust the differentials and the limit of integration appropriately. So our integral would be from some c to d over 2 pi y still times the integral uh, times uh, the square root of 1 plus dx dy square with respect to y. Let's consider a, a fairly simple example here. We have, we're asked to find the area of the surface obtained by rotating f of x is equal to 1 third x cubed on 0 to the square root of 2 about the x-axis. So if we just wanted to get a rough sketch of what this looked like, 1 third x cubed from 0 to the square root of 2, well if x is 0, y uh, f of 0 is 0, and if x is the square root of 2, If x was the square root of 2, we would get some point up here. And f of x equals x cubed over that interval looks something like this. Now we're going to rotate that about the x-axis. So we would get the mirror image of that down here. And we're rotating about And so we get that, I don't know, that, that bell shape, and we want the surface area. All right, well, if f of x is 1 third x cubed, notice that its derivative, all right, notice that dy dx, or f prime, is just x squared. So then the surface area would be the integral from 0 to the square root of 2 of 2 pi times y. Well, y is 1 third x cubed times the square root of 1 plus the derivative of y, so x squared squared, and dx. All right, so simplifying this a little bit, I can take the 2 pi out, I can take the 1 third out, so I'd have 2 pi over 3, again, integral from 0 to root 2, uh, and I'd have an x cubed, and I'd have a square root of 1 plus x to the fourth dx. All right, and this looks like a situation where we can use a substitution. I'm going to let u equal x to the fourth then du would be 4x cubed. So I've got the x cubed here, uh, 4x cubed dx. So I would need a 4, and I would need to multiply by a 1 fourth on the outside. All right, and let's remember if, uh, if x equals 0, that means that u equals 0, and if x equals the square root of 2, then u being x to the fourth, u would be, um, actually, look, I don't want, I want u to be 1 plus x to the fourth. Sorry about that. du is still 4x cubed dx. Now, if x is 0, u is 1. 
and if x is the square root of 2, u would be 1 plus 4 would be 5. So after the substitution, I can write this as, let's see, 2 pi over 3 times 1 fourth, that would be pi over 6. I'd have the integral from 1 to 5 of the square root of u du. And so let's see, that's pi over 6 times, uh, let's see, u to the 1 half, that would be 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. So 2 thirds, and I would evaluate the u to the 3 halves from 1 to 5. So that's what, pi over 9 times 5 to the 3 halves minus, and 1 to the 3 halves is just 1. So that would be an exact value for the, surf, the area of the surface, and we could find an approximation using our calculators. All right, here's another example. This one's a bit tougher. Find the area of the surface obtained by rotating f of x equals the square root of 1 plus e to the x on the interval 0 to 1 about the x-axis. All right, so like I did in the previous exercise, let me first calculate the derivative f prime of x. Let's see, that's 1 plus e to the x to the 1 half. So I'd have 1 half of 1 plus e to the x to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside would be e to the x. So then the surface area would be given by the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 pi times the square root of 1 plus e to the x, that's the y, times the square root of 1 plus the derivative 1 half 1 plus e to the x to the negative 1 half times e to the x, and that all has to be squared dx. I can immediately bring the 2 pi out, and I'd have the integral from 0 to 1. I'm going to leave that square root of 1 plus e to the x alone for a moment, and I'm going to work inside this bigger radical. Let's see, I'd have 1 plus uh, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 plus e to the x to the negative 1 half squared, that would be a 1 plus e to the x to the negative first power and e to the x squared, that's e to the 2x. So I've got 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1, square root of 1 plus e to the x. Let's work on this radical a little more. I've got 1 plus, and I can write this as a fraction, e to the 2x over 4 times 1 plus e to the x. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add those fractions together. Well, I've got 1 plus the second fraction, so I'm going to think of that 1 as 4 times 1 plus e to the x over 4 times 1 plus e to the x. So that way I can add those fractions. So now I've got 2 pi, I've got the integral from 0 to 1, I've got a square root of 1 plus e to the x times another square root, I've got 4 times 1 plus e to the x plus e to the 2x. So that's e to the 2x plus 4e to the x plus 4. And I'll write the denominator as just 4 times 1 plus e to the x. So 2 pi integral 0 to 1, square root of 1 plus e to the x. All right, now e to the 2x plus 4e to the x plus 4 is a perfect square trinomial. And in fact, it can be written as e to the x plus 2 squared. And the denominator is 4 times 1 plus e to the x. All right, so let's bring this up to the top. So now, the surface area is, uh, don't forget the 2 pi, 
integral 0 to 1. Square root of 1 plus e to the x. Now let's square root everything in that fraction. The square root of e to the x plus 2 squared would be the absolute value of e to the x plus 2, but that's always positive. So I can just write an e to the x plus 2 in the numerator. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 1 plus e to the x, I'll just leave it as the square root of 1 plus e to the x. Notice now that those square root of 1 plus e to the x's divide out, and I can bring the 2 outside bring this to outside the integral. So the surface area is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x plus 2 dx. You had to do a lot of algebra to get to this, but now it's very simple. The surface area is pi times e to the x plus 2x evaluated from 0 to 1. So the surface area is pi times, let's see, I'd have uh, e to the first plus 2 minus e to the 0 plus 0. So e to the first is e plus 2 minus e to the 0, that's a 1. So this ends up being pi times e plus 1 is the value of the surface area. Now, our calculators don't have a specific surface area function that would do something like this, but if you can at least write the integral properly, right? So if you could write that surface area integral, you could use the, the calculator to evaluate the integral or at least approximate it if you were working on a TI-83 or 84 calculator. Of course, on the 89, you can evaluate it exactly and you should be able to get that exact value. Find the area of the surface obtained by rotating x equals 1 plus 2y squared for 1 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 2 about the x-axis. If you wanted to get a visual for this exercise, x equals 1 plus 2y squared is a parabola opening to the right. And so you would get a graph that does something like this. Now for y is between 1 and 2, well we'd have here's y equals 1, here's y equals 2, so we would kind of take off those points on the curve. And now let's, I'm just going to keep that part of the curve that we just drew. And now we rotate that about the x-axis, so I would get a, I'm to get other points over here. And there's my surface from the rotation, and I want to find that surface area. Well, here we have x as a function of y. So I would need to use the integral. I would need to find the derivative with respect to y. So then dx dy is 4y. So I'll need to use that. So then the surface area would be the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 pi. Now normally here for the y we would substitute the f of x, but since our, we have our function, uh, since we have x as a function of y, we just leave it as y times the square root of 1 plus the 4y square. I can bring the 2y, uh, 2 pi outside the integral. 1 to 2, y, square root of, oh, and I need a dy here on the outside. 1 plus 16y square, dy. And this looks like a good place for a substitution. I will let u equal 1 plus 16y squared. So then du is 32y dy. So I've got the y. I need a 32. And so that means I need to multiply by a 1 over 32 on the outside. 
and let's substitute, uh, let's change our limits of integration. So if y equals 1, that implies that u would be 1 plus 16 times 1 squared, that's 17. And if y equals 2, then u would equal 1 plus 16 times 2 squared is 4, 16 times 4 is 64, u equals 65. So I'd have 2 pi times 1 over 32, that's pi over 16. I'd have the integral from 17 to 65. And I would have the square root of u du. And so then the surface area would be pi over 16 times what, 3 halves u to the 3 halves. And we'll evaluate the u to the 3 halves from 17 to 65. And so pi over 16 times 3 over 2, that ends up being uh, pi over 24. And let's see, I would have a 65 to the 3 halves minus a 17 to the 3 halves. And again, I could approximate that if necessary. That concludes the presentation for this section.